Shalom, shalom. It's your brother Wal Rum. You're back with another lesson. Lord willing, it's edifying. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Wahrakakadash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Shalom to the 144,000 men of the Lord you see on the highways and byways prophesying in the name and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, also in the correct doctrine. I want to send a shalom to the, uh, the, the one third men, women, and children. That will escape the judges of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by their faith. I just got another lesson I want to put out through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Um, as we always go into the the, uh, the battle of Armageddon, the, um, the the time of Jacob's trouble, um, World War Three, the mark of the beast, all this is to restore the children of Israel, man. So this this should be when we see these things coming and pass, we should be delighted that this is the time the Lord is going to redeem us and save us out of this captivity, man. So let's get a couple of videos and Lord willing to be edifying because we're about to be restored, man, back to our power as kings and princesses on the earth, man. Today, I'm prepared to share what we know at this stage. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into eastern Russia. <coughs> We assess that these soldiers traveled by ship from the Wamsan area in North Korea to Vladivostok, Russia. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will en enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. After completing training, these soldiers could travel to Western Russia and then engage in combat against the Ukrainian military. So we're seeing the um, North Koreans and the Russians making moves, man. And he said it was 3,000. They said it's more like 10,000 troops from North Korea. And these troops may be being trained in Russia to go back to Korea and to attack South Korea, man. Because those nations haven't fought any wars in a, in a long time, man. It's been many, many years. Uh, but Russia, I mean, I know Russia, but uh, North Korea and South Korea really are still at war. But they haven't had any, any pretty much live training where they can go against anyone, man. So they might be, I don't know, I'm just speculating. But you got to think these people are not like Babylon the Great and these other nations that are, are joined to NATO, man. They're not rushing into war. They're strategically putting everything in place because they know that they can't lose, man. So Babylon the Great, they, they don't they don't care, man. They just going with their head cut off because they believe they have nuclear weapons, but all the other nations have them as well. And check this out. <laughs> We know about 10,000 soldiers of North Korea that they are preparing to send fight against us. This is really urgent thing. With Donald Trump, I said to him, we are going to go так. Який же вихід? Або у Україні буде ядерна зброя, і тоді це для нас захист. Або ми повинні мати якийсь альянс. Окрім НАТО, на сьогодні ми не знаємо дієві альянси. Країни НАТО сьогодні не в війні. Країни НАТО не воюють. Країни НАТО люди всі живі. Слава Богу! І тому ми її обираємо. Ми її обираємо НАТО. Не ядерну зброю. Ми обираємо НАТО. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming here. We will have uh, a round of... I said my arguments, and he said that... Yes, he agree with my arguments. Bye-bye. Now, he thinks Donald Trump is going to help him, man. Uh... Now, you can pause and read that, but this is the training that the North Koreans are going into, man. And like I said, this is all to get us back in power, man. They're fighting a world war to get the children of Israel back in power, man. 
And you're seeing the North Koreans come into Russia, man. They're being positioned and put in place in training, training facilities or whatever they're doing. But this is all for us, man. This is all for us to get the kingdom of heaven and to be back in power, man. And I miss these little headlines. As you see, Saudi Arabia, this is when uh, Lee, um, a, uh, what's his name? Lincoln, Blinken, Blinken went to Saudi Arabia. You notice the flag, the American flag is not behind them, man. So they're not showing any respect for Babylon the Great anymore, man. So Saudi Arabia, they said he skipped out on the uh, BRICS meeting to meet with Blinken, man. The secretary, I think, the secretary of state, if I'm not mistaken. But you see, he noticed no flag. The American flag is, is gone, man. They have no... They have no uh, respect for Babylon the Great anymore, man. They're losing their power, man. This is a headline with some BRICS news. It says, Russia's President Putin says Iran has become a full-fledged member of the BRICS. And see, this is what America has been trying to not get them to uh, be a join to, man, because it's going to be military agreements as well as financial agreements with these countries, man. And it's basically phasing out the American dollar. Right here you see, and this is all X. This is a U.S. civil defense news. U.S. and Israel ready to strike Iran. See, they're going to strike them together, man. It says, in a massive joint operation that will expand the wars into one major regional war. And this is what's going to be the end of all, man. It says, instead of slowly downing, uh, 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 instead of slowly down arming shipments uh shipments to Tel Aviv, the US has massively increased arms shipments. World War Three is about to kick off. And there's no turning back from it, man. So they they're gonna strike them, but they they're trying to do it in a, in, a, in a way that they don't get the, the, the full force of Iran returning back on them, man. You see, Russia will not tolerate NATO's mistake this time. See that? These nations are ready to fight, man. They said they're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna let them mistake, uh, make any more mistakes, man, and pushing their red line back. It says entry into Ukraine means World War Three. So there you have it, man. This is all for the children of Israel, man. The Lord has blessed us to understand what times we're in and what's going to happen in the earth. Civil defense news: Iran claims they have weapons. More powerful than nuclear weapons. And man, they don't tell them what they got, man. See, these nations are not afraid anymore because they had the same capable, uh, the same capable weapons that Babylon the Great has, man. And Russia has more nukes than they do. Check this out. The entire Israeli package was based upon Iranian defenses defined by S-300 type capabilities. S-300 is a Russian surface-to-air missile. The Russians just provided the Iranians with a significant number of S-400s. Together with sophisticated electronic warfare packages, going to jam the Israelis as they come in. Backed up by S-135 fighters. Now, here's the thing. How many Iranians have been trained on the operation of the S-400? I'll give you a quick hint. None. Who's operating the S-400 on Iranian soil? I'll give you another hint. The Russians. Who's flying the S-35s? Not Iranian pilots. Russians. So now Israel to attack Iran is going to have to go head-to-head -head with Russia. You think Israel wants to do that? You think Israel's ready to do that? Do you think the United States is willing to let them do that? Now, what is Israel going to bomb? Are they going to bomb the nuclear site? That's the end of Israel. Israel disappears that quick. You understand the first Israeli bomb that drops on Iran, over 500 missiles will immediately be fired. These are solid rocket fuel missiles. You can immediately reload, fire 500 more within 15 minutes. That's a 1,000 missiles impacting every strategic site in Israel within 30 minutes of the first Israeli bomb dropping. The Israeli airplane won't even be halfway home before his entire country is destroyed. That's going through the mind of Benjamin Netanyahu. You want to know why he didn't order the attack? Because he can't order the attack. He's got nothing to attack with. Iran holds all the cards. I know that went pretty fast, but he explained to you the reason why they're slowly trying to attack, man, because they don't know what they really got going on over there. And I noticed today they had like a, a attack on their nuclear plant overnight where it was caught on fire. But I'm going to see if I can kind of slow it down. But he's basically telling you if they shoot the missiles over there, they're, they're ready to shoot all theirs back 530 minutes. Let me go through it one more time. Let me let him play it one more time. 
The entire Israeli package is based upon Iranian defenses defined by S-300 type capabilities. S-300 is a Russian surface-to-air missile. The Russians just provided the Iranians with a significant number of S-400s. Together with the sophisticated electronic warfare package, is going to jam the Israelis as they come in. Backed up by S-135 fighters. Now, here's the thing. How many Iranians have been trained on the operation of the S-400? I'll give you a quick hint. None. Who's operating the S-400 on Iranian soil? I'll give you another hint. The Russians. Who's flying the S-35s? Not Iranian pilots. Russians. So now Israel to attack Iran is going to have to go head-to-head with Russia. You think Israel wants to do that? You think Israel's ready to do that? Do you think the United States is willing to let them do that? Now, what is Israel going to bomb? Are they going to bomb the nuclear site? That's the end of Israel. Israel disappears that quick. You understand the first Israeli bomb that drops on Iran, over 500 missiles will immediately be fired. These are solid rocket fuel missiles. You can immediately reload, fire 500 more within 15 minutes. That's 1,000 missiles impacting every strategic site in Israel within 30 minutes of the first Israeli bomb dropping. The Israeli airplane won't even be halfway home before his entire country is destroyed. That's going through the mind of Benjamin Netanyahu. You want to know why he didn't order the attack? Because he can't order the attack. He's got nothing to attack with. Iran holds all the cards. You see it, man, because he said the small hatters know if they attack them, they're they basically attacking Russia, man, because Russia and our and uh, Russia and Iran have made a pact together, man. You can read that in Ezekiel 38, man. But this, this lesson I want to bring out the point that the Edomites are going down and the Israelites are coming up, man, because this is the this this is right here is solidifying that we're in the time that the Lord is going to return, man. The Lord is going to redeem the children of Israel, man. We're gonna start hearing uh Ecclesiastes, not Salakia, uh Lamentations four, and I'm gonna drop down to verse uh twenty is it twenty twenty one? It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and thou and shalt make thyself naked. The punish of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. See, thy punishment has been finished, man. It's been completed. And this right here is letting you know for a fact it is done, man. He will no more carry thee away captive away captive into away into captivity he will visit thine iniquity o daughter of edom he will discover thy sin see now it's being tra the, the, the 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 um the curses are being translated to esau man it was a deuteronomy 30 and 7 man these curses that we suffer is going to go on to our enemies esau is going to suffer the wrath of yahweh bashem yahweh See, our, our punishment is fulfilled, man. And the Lord has going to redeem the elect of his people to give him the to give them the promises of the kingdom of heaven, man. So we're living in beautiful times, man, to be a part of this truth, man. Because we're going to be redeemed. And our enemies are going to suffer the wrath of the Lord, man. Which we had to suffer. This is Psalms 51. And I'm going to drop down to verse 6. It says, Behold. Thou deservest, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with usup, and I will and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be withered whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that my bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities and that's for the elect man our sins are going to be blotted out man our sins are going to be covered man creating me a clean heart and that's what the lord is doing to the elect making in us a clean heart man O power and renew a right spirit within me and that's what the Lord is, is doing, renewing that right spirit within us, man. That's why we repent and return to the Lord. It says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And that's what we pray for daily, man. The Lord take his, not to take his Holy Spirit from us, man. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And that's what we pray for constantly, man. The, the Lord to restore un, in us that joy of thy salvation, man. That's what we praying for, man. That's what we do these lessons daily, man. That's what we look at, look into the scriptures daily for, man. 
That's salvation, man. It says, and uphold me with thy, thy free spirit. Let me read that one more time. It said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit, man. And see, the Lord is going to restore us, man, to our rightful place in the earth, man, as kings and princesses in the earth, man. And we deserve it, man, because we've, we've learned our lesson, man. See, I'm speaking of the elect. We learned our lesson, man. We repented to the Lord. And now we're ready for the, the blessings that he promised for us, man. This is um, Jer uh, Jeremiah 30 and, uh, 30 and verse 7. It says, For uh, at last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. See that? All hell is about to break loose, man. And we at the cusp of that breaking loose, man. But the elect are going to be saved out of it, man. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh by Shem of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves on of him. See that? See, the Lord is going to redeem us, man. And take that, that, um, that yoke of bondage of us being in slavery, man, away. And we're still in slavery to this very day, man, until the Lord returns. So we're waiting for the Lord to remove that curse of slavery off of us, man. That's what we're patiently waiting for. Verse 9, it says, But they shall serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh their power in David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. And see, these, these, these prophecies are a blessing to us because we're seeing them coming to pass, man. So we enter into those times the Lord promised us that was going to happen, man, to be restored, to be back in our rightful place in the earth. 10, it says, Therefore fear not thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. That's plain, man. See, we're in the place of our captivity, and the Lord says he's going to save us here, man. So the, the Lord is going to restore us to our rightful power, man. And Jacob will return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid, man. None shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, said Yahweh by Shem Yahweh what? To save thee. Though I have made a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. See, these nations are going to get it for what they did to us, man. It says, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. See, we served our punishment, man. We received the chastisement of the Lord, man. It's like I said, the only elect is going to understand this, man. Because what's, what's for to come on our, 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 our enemies is going to be a great shame, man. It's a blessing to us. But to them, it's going to be their shame, man. 12, it says, For thus say how about Shem Shah, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou has no healing medicine. And see, our people think Esau has a healing medicine. That's why they're looking to, to, to Kamala and to Trump to, to pretty much bail them out of a situation that they can't, is, is incurable here, man. And I'm going to drop down, man, because I want to get the point right here. Drop down to verse 17. It says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee, of thy wounds, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, because they cause thee, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. And that's us, man. The Lord said we won't be redeemed here, and that was the truth, man. He told us, and it hasn't happened. He was saving us for him. See, we had to go through all the punishments or the curses that was put upon us, man. That's why the Lord said, no man will redeem you. And we are Zion that no man seeketh after. No one is seeking after the children of Israel, man. 
be blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. No one is seeking your help. No one is asking, uh, uh, how, 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 uh, how are you doing, man? They're seeking our destruction. Verse 18, it says, Thus said you how about Shem Shah, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent, tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. And see, this is the Lord is going to do this, man, because the Lord is our power, man. He is going to have mercy on us. He says, and the cities shall be built up. Her, her, whole, her own heap and the, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that, have, that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. See that? We're going to be multiplied, man. That's how we know we're going to have multiple wives, man. The scripture tell you with Isaiah 4 and 1, you're going to have many women, man. Seven, it says seven, but seven is a number of completion, man. It says, I will also glorify them and they shall not be small, man. So we have to have many wives to bring forth these children, man. Their children also shall be also, uh, as aforetime. And their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that all that oppress them. See that the Lord is going to uh, going to punish all that oppress us, man. So the heathens are going to be destroyed, man. They're going to be broken down and punished, man. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me for who is this that that arrange that engages his heart to approach unto me says you how about shimmy shah and ye shall be my people and i will be your power see that the lord is going to be our power once again man and every nation is going to know this man the lord is on our side every nation is soon going to know that you have about Shem is with the with the children of Israel, man. And no harm is going to touch us. This is Jeremiah 29 in verse 10. It says, For thus said you about Shem Yahushah, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. And the completion, like I said, 70 means completion, man. A, 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 a complete number of years. And the Lord is going to redeem us here from Babylon the Great, man. And I know this is speaking about in the ancient world, but it's speaking about us now as well because we're in Babylon the Great, man, the daughter of Babylon. It says, I will visit you and perform my good work, word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I ha I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. See that? The Lord has peace on in his mind for his elect, man. To give you an expected end, then shall ye call upon me. See that? Now we call upon the Lord in spirit and in truth, man. And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ain't that what we doing, man? And you, you, can, you can't tell me the Lord is not hearing our prayers, man. That's why the Lord is stirring up these armies to get ready to fight, man. The Lord is hearing our prayers, man. And ye shall seek me and find me. And see, we all have found the Lord, man. Those that seek him with, his, with their whole heart is going to say it. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall stretch, stretch, uh, slack it, not stretch. When ye, ye shall search for me with all your heart. And we have found the Lord, man. We have found him through his word. We have found him through his name. And we'll continue to push that, man. So you can understand and see the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua over his people, man. And I will be found of you, says Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. See, the Lord is not lost in our eyes, man. These people seeking out the, uh, the, uh, the, the white meat, the uh, Cesar Borgia, which you call Jesus, they're lost, man. They don't know what's going on, man. They don't, they don't know what their power is. They believe it's a so-called white man here in Babylon. They're great, man. But we have found the Lord, man. 
And we can tap into it by our prayers, man. We can pray in the correct name of the Lord, man. Verse 14, it says, And I will be found of you, says Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, and I will turn away your captivity. See that? The Lord is turning away our captivity now, man. We just read that in Lamentation. That cup has been passed to our enemies, man. And he's turning away our captivity, man. That's why we speak boldly in this truth, man. Before, before the eyes of those that put us in captivity. It says, and I and I will gather you from all the all all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you, says Yahweh Hashem Yahushah, and I will bring you again into a place whence caused you to be carried away captive. And we was carried away captive out of the west coast of Africa, but we were scattered from Israel, man. And um Yahweh uh, Shah prophesied that in um I think it was Matthew 10, I want to say. But anyway, let me get back to this. Verse 15, it says, because ye, well, it was basically 70 AD, we was taken out of, uh, we was taken out of our land. But Yahweh Shah prophesied that in, uh, I think it's in Matthew. I don't want to say what number because I forgot it off the top of my head. Verse 15, it says, because ye said, you have said, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah hath raised us up prophets in Babylon. And the Lord has raised up prophets again in Babylon the great, man. To bring this truth out, man. So we're entering into those times, man, that's going to be unbelievable to those that don't know the Lord. But to us that know the Lord, it's going to be believable unto us because we're seeing it happen. We're seeing it through the scriptures, man. It's a beautiful time to be a part of this truth, man. Because you're seeing the Lord stirring up the earth on our behalf, man. The Lord has heard our prayers and our cries unto him, man. This is Zechariah in the NLT. I'm gonna get is in the NLT. I'm starting uh, uh, Zechariah eight and verse one. It says, "Then answered, then another message came to me from Yahweh by Shem Yahushua of heaven's armies. This is what Yahweh by Shem Yahushua of heaven heaven's army says. My love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I am consumed." With passion for Jerusalem, man. See, the Lord loves us, man. And that's why we're finna be redeemed from the hands of our captives, man. It says, And now, Yahweh Hashem Yahushua says, I am returning to Mount Zion, and I will live in Jerusalem. See that? The Lord is living in us, man. Then Jerusalem, and he's also going to physically live in, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom of heaven, man. In, in, in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be back in our holy land, man, Jerusalem. It says, then Jerusalem will be called a faithful city and the mountain of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua of heaven's army will be called the holy mountain, man. This is what Yahweh by Shem Yahushua of heaven's army says. Once again, old men and women will walk Jerusalem streets with their canes and we'll sit together in the city squares. And the streets of the cities will be filled with boys and girls at play, man. So he's just telling you, man, our people are going to be at peace once again, man. It says, this is what Yahweh Hashem Yahushua of Heaven's Army says. All this may seem impossible to you now, a small remnant of power's people. But is, is it impossible for me? Says you how about Shimei Al-Shai's heaven, of heaven's army? See, is it impossible to the Lord? See, our people can't see what we see, man. See, we see the kingdom of heaven coming, coming to pass, man. We see the Lord cracking the clouds, bringing down Esau Edom, man, and these heathen nations, man. Seven, it says, this is what you how about Shimei Al-Shai of heaven's army says. You can be sure that I will rescue my people from the east and from the west. See that? The Lord said you can be sure that the Lord is going to rescue us, man. And we're close to that happening, man. I will bring them home again to live safely in Jerusalem. See that? We're going to go back to the kingdom of heaven, man, and live in peace. They will be my people and I will be, it's like, and I will be faithful and just toward them as their power, man. Beautiful, man. So the Lord is going to redeem us, man. We have peace coming to us. 
in our own land, man. Where we'll be at rest, where children will be playing, man. Here, you, you can't get your kids outside, man. You got pedophiles, all type of shit, man. People doing shit to them, trying to pause them. All manner of wickedness here, man. But we're soon to get rest and peace in our own land, man. In our own land. And the Lord is soon to redeem us, man. We're soon to be restored to our righteous heir, right, as righteous heirs of the earth, man. This is as Ezekiel 34 in the NLT. I'm going to drop down to 25. It says, I will make a covenant of peace with my people and drive away the dangerous animals from the land. This is heathen, man. Then they will be able to camp safely in the, wilder, in the wildest places and sleep in the woods without fear, man. I will bless my people and their homes around my holy hill. And I will, it's like, an, and in the proper season, I will send the showers they need, man. There will be showers of blessing. And that's what's going to happen to us, man. We're going to be showered with blessings, man. So don't get upset about these, this World War III coming, man. Your family not getting right with the Lord and they're going to be destroyed. Don't, you don't, don't, don't be upset with that, man. This is what you have to be at peace with because the Lord is meant for you to understand and get this truth, man. And then for them to get it on the, on the other side, man. The orchards and fields of my people will, be yield, will yield bumper crops and everyone will live in safety. See that? We're waiting, we're, waiting, we're waiting to be in peace, man, in safety. When I have broken their chains of slavery and rescued them from those who enslaved them. See that? We're going to be rescued from those that sla enslaved us, man. It says, then they will know that I am Yahweh by Shem Yahweh See that? The Lord is going to crack the class of those chariots, man. And everyone is going to be soon to know that the blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the true children of Israel, man. They will no longer be prey for other nations and wild animals will no longer devour them. They will live in safety and no one will frighten, frighten them. And, and that's what's going to happen, man. The Lord is going to redeem us, man. And no one is going to be against us, man. No one is going to be against us, man. We're going to truly be in peace in the name and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh man. This is Acts 1, and I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days thence. Hence, and see, that's what happened, man. We had to stay here in Babylon the Great before so we can receive the Holy Spirit. That's the prophesied word, man. And we received that. We received the power from on high before we was able to be rescued, man. So the Lord had a process to, for us to see the mistakes we made, the punishments we had to receive for, for the, like the, the sins we've committed. Now we're gonna be now we transitioned in the time of the Lord redeeming us, man. But it was all a process, man. The scripture tells you what's it? Psalms, uh, I want to say Psalms 25, 125. As it's being like, let me see if I can find that, man. Damn, man. Let me see if I can find that. I think it's Psalms 125. Psalms 125. So Lockie, let me get this scripture real quick because the Lord says it's going to be like a dream. I think it's Psalms 125. Let me see. No, I ain't it. Let me see.
Let's see. All right, man. It's, it's Psalm 25. I can't find it, man. I think it's Psalms 25. If I can't find it here, man, I put it in the comment section. That said, as you woke up as from a dream. Ah, oh, man. It's going to be, it's to the scriptures say it's going to be like a, we was in a dream, all this happening. It's going to be like a dream, man. I can't find that scripture. Let me see if I can put woke. Well, I still say the same thing, 73. I'll just put it in the uh, comment section. I'll put it in the comment section. I'll find it. As soon as I get off, I know I'll find it. Or it might hit me as soon as I get off. But let me continue on. It says, this is uh, Acts 1 and 6. It says, then therefore, it's locking. And then they thereof were come together. They asked him, of us of him, saying, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See that? So they asked him when the Lord uh, was basically resurrected. They asked him, will he restore the kingdom of heaven at that time, man? And see, like I said, we had to go through all this for us to receive this Holy Spirit, receive the judgment and the punishments of uh, the curses of Deuteronomy and the Lord returning back to us and him, him, um, being resurrected and they thought at that time they was going to be restored but now we know we're going to be restored in this time man, at the end of Esau's world it says and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the season which the father have put in his own power see that the Heavenly Father had this already placed in his time, man. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. See that? And the Holy Spirit is coming upon us, man. And we're going to receive spiritual powers very soon as well, man. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in all and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's the reason why we're on the west coast of the world, man. This word and this gospel had to be preached everywhere. And we had to be raised up to preach this word everywhere, man. Because the scripture tell you that uh, um, this word goes out and the end shall come, or roughly paraphrasing the scripture. So it was a whole process the Lord, man, put right in front of our faces, man. We seen the process, man. Now we entering into the time the Lord is going to redeem us, man. Verse nine, it says, and when he had heard, and when he had spake these things, while they beheld, he saw, he, like it, he, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfast toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why standing, why stand ye gazing up into heaven, the same Yahweh, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go up into heaven. So we know he was taken up in a cloud, which is Psalms what 104, uh, 68, or 104 and 4. 104 and 4 told you the angels. The, those chariots are are, are, um, are clouds. So we know he was taken up in a so-called UFO, man, a chariot. And he's going to come back in the same manner, man. 
See, the, the Lord has blessed us to understand all these things now, man. And we can see them plainly. This is Revelations 1 in verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. See that? The angels just told them the same way he came, well, the same way he was taken up is the same way he's going to come, come back. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. See that? The beginning and the ending, says Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, which is and which was and which is to come, all, the Almighty, man. And see, the Lord gave us, he gave us a, a clues of when he was going to return, man. He didn't actually know when, but he gave us clues to look for. So we will know when he was going to return, man. And we see him, man. And it's a blessing. Like I said, it's a blessing to see him, man, because so many people out here blind, man, don't have a clue what's going on, man. Not knowing World War Three is the the... the, the the, the, the linchpin for us getting the kingdom of heaven, man. These armies and these nations being placed in positions to fight is the linchpin of us getting the kingdom of heaven, man. This is um, 2 Andrew 6 and verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be a part of the part, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall the be the end of the first in the beginning of the of it that followeth. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See that? Jacob is is the, the world beginning after the one Esau as after Esau's falls, man. So all these nations are put to, being put together for Esau's fall, man. For the end of Esau's world and for us to be brung, brung in, man. For the children of Israel to be restored, man. It's a plain movie, man, to the to the elect, man. We see it clear as day. It's nothing hidden from us now, man. We understand it. We understand who Esau is. We understand our forefathers. We understand what times you're in, man. It is not hidden from us. So I'm going to end it there. Lord Windows Edifying. Shalom. Shalom.